Japan is home to a lot of things. Video games, anime, very crowded cities, and nice scenery in the more rural areas. But it's also home to lots of urban legends. Urban legends have always been a thing that intrigued me since each region of the world will have its own catalog of weird or creepy legends told throughout the ages and a lot of them end up being the inspiration for a lot of famous monsters or plot points in games, movies, and more. What's fun is that Japan used to have a popular game in the Edo period that was all about telling urban legends, Hyaku Monogatari Kaidankai, or roughly a hundred supernatural tales, where people would light a hundred candles and tell each other chilling encounters or folklore tales, and after each story, they would put out one of the candles causing the room to get progressively darker as time went on. The people who played this game were said to have spooked themselves so bad by the end of it that they didn't want to tell the last story, out of fear that if they did, all of the spirits they invoked over the course of the game would prey upon them. So, how about we do something like that here? I don't have a hundred to tell you, but how about we meet it halfway? These are 50 creepy and potentially chilling Japanese urban legends. Beto Beto san. Named after the onomatopoeia for footsteps, Beto Beto san is a formless spirit that follows people that walk the streets alone at night. You'll know that Beto Beto is following you by hearing another set of footsteps that are in sync with yours. If you were to turn around, you would see nothing. And yet, the footsteps continue to get closer and closer. Despite how scary this experience would be, Beto Beto san is said to be otherwise completely harmless. However, if you would like Beto Beto san to stop tormenting you, simply step aside and say, After you, Beto Beto san. You should then hear footsteps walking off into the night, and once he is out of earshot, you may continue your walk in peace. Tripping Ghost This story details a woman named Midori who works at an unnamed company in Ueda City. Her co-workers always find themselves falling over as they exit the bathroom stall, complaining that it's as if something is tripping them despite nothing being there. They warn Midori to be careful lest they all end up with scraped knees. But Midori knows that she won't trip and fall, as she seems to be the only one who can see the ghostly woman on the floor, tripping those who come out of the stalls. Red QR Code These are said to be found in everyday places, on telephone poles, plastered onto buildings, and other things such as that. They look just like a standard QR code, only it's red instead of the standard black. Despite your blooming curiosity, you should never scan one of these codes. Doing so is said to give your phone a virus, impeding any and all apps until the phone is practically useless. Some even say that the code takes you to a site that sells snuff films and other illicit materials. And some have said that after scanning it, you're shown a video that depicts how you will die. Hanako-san Hanako-san is an urban legend about the spirit of a young girl who haunts school bathrooms. Her origins vary from different sources, some saying that she is the ghost of an elementary school girl killed by a bombing raid in World War II while she was playing hide-and-seek. Others say she was the victim of abuse and committed suicide, and a few even say she was murdered by some psychopath or maybe a teacher. According to the legend, a person who goes to the third or fourth stall in the girl's bathroom can have a chance of meeting Hanako-san. They are supposed to knock three times before asking, are you there, Hanako-san? If she is present, the person will then hear a voice answer, I'm here. If the person chooses to enter the stall, there will be a small girl with bobbed hair in a red skirt or dress. It's said that in the presence of Hanako-san, the lights will start to flicker, other bathroom stalls will inexplicably open and close, and blood will start flowing from the faucets. However, Hanako-san is said to be relatively harmless with her only goal being to scare people. 
She might scream loudly, throw around toilet paper, and other such minor things as that, but that's pretty much it. The only other thing reported with those that have supposedly encountered Hanako-san is that she shoved the victim's head in the toilet. And when the worst thing a ghost can do is give you a swirly, I'd say that's pretty harmless. Juboko According to legend, Juboko are trees that appear at the site of former battlefields where many people have died. While its appearance doesn't look that much different from a normal tree, since it bloomed on a blood-soaked battlefield, it's said to be a living tree that feeds on human blood. When an unsuspecting person gets too close, it grabs them with finger-like branches and jabs them with branches that operate like tubes, sucking the blood out of their victim like a vampire. Once they're drained of their blood, the leftover skin and organs are eaten by animals and insects, leaving behind nothing but bones. These bones litter the base of a juboko, and are a telltale sign of one. But another way to identify a juboko is to cut it, for if you were to cut one of these trees, thick red blood would trickle out. Nopera Bo Also known as No Face, Nopera Bo is a spirit that loves to frighten humans. They look just like any other person with their distinct feature being the lack of a face. Encountered on empty roads late at night, Nopera Bo usually appears in the guise of a man or a woman with his or her back turned towards the observer. When approached, the spirit turns around and reveals its true form, reveling in the terror it inflicts upon its unsuspecting victim. They can even go above and beyond with this trick, appearing with a face at first, but then wiping it off with their hand when the time is right. Nopera Bo often work together in groups to scare an individual. As their victim runs away in a panic from the first Nopera Bo, he'll run into another person who asks him what is wrong. When the victim explains what he saw, the person replies, Oh, you mean like this? And wipes their face away, just like the first. They are even known to impersonate people the victim knows, such as family or neighbors, meaning some exceptionally poor saps can get combo scared by Nopera Bo all night, only to run home telling their wife or husband what they saw, and have their significant other just look at them and say, Oh, you mean like this? White String this one's a bit amusing, as it was mainly used to scare kids away from getting piercings. But basically, a young girl wanted to get her ears pierced. Her parents initially refused, saying that she was too young. But after enough begging, the parents relented and gave her some money to go to the local mall and get her ears pierced at the jewelry store. But the girl was greedy and wanted to keep the money, so she decided to get her best friend to help her pierce her ear themselves. The friends soon arrived, and they began the procedure. Getting a large needle, heating it, and sticking it through both of the girl's earlobes, while it was very painful. In the end, her ears were pierced, and she had some extra money to boot. A few days later, the girl was in school when she began to feel a jabbing pain in her left ear. Her earlobe was extremely itchy and continued to irritate her throughout the day. During break time, she rushed to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. Her earlobe was red and inflamed, and she scratched at it. She wondered what was wrong with her ear to make it like this, and that's when she noticed something strange. She saw what looked like a piece of white string sticking out of the hole in her earlobe. Without thinking, she started to pick and pull at the string, and after a few minutes of messing around with it, the white string was now longer and still hung out of her earlobe. The string seemed endless, and the more she pulled at it, the longer it got. Annoyed with it, she took out some scissors from her backpack, held them up to the string, and cut it. Suddenly, everything went pitch black. She couldn't see anything, and there was a burning pain in her ear and eyes. Panicked, she began to scream and shout until students and faculty came to see what was wrong. She was rushed to an emergency room at a local hospital, where a doctor examined her. When she told the doctor about the white string and what had happened, a shocked expression appeared on the doctor's face. I'm sorry, but that wasn't a wet string. That was part of your optic nerve. If you severed a big part of the nerve like you said, 
then that means you'll be blind for the rest of your life. Again, this one's funny when you think about all the parents that tell the story to their kids to scare them off into getting piercings or doing it themselves. Since kids would be the only people who wouldn't know about the optic nerve and how it can't possibly leak out through your earlobe. SSS Curve This area in Okinawa is said to be the site where many Japanese soldiers lost their lives during World War II. As such, rumors say that their relentless spirits haunt this pathway, with reports citing that visitors feel a wave of nausea, dizziness, and could even suffer from hallucinations. They also cite sounds of screams of pain and agony, or that you end up feeling someone's hand on your shoulder. This area is known to be pretty hard to find, but you know you'll be in the right place if you see a red sign that warns you that it is forbidden to pass. Yama Uba Known also as the Mountain Witch, the Yama Uba take the form of kind old ladies that offer weary travelers a place to eat and rest while they're hiking deep in the mountains. If the traveler accepts her offer, she will take them to her hut off the side of the road and be a gracious host. But late at night, when their guests are fast asleep, the Yama Uba reveals their true form, an ugly demonic witch. Those who don't manage to escape will be caught and eaten alive. It's said that she could use powerful magic to prevent you from leaving, but there are those lucky few that manage to escape and tell the tale. Another version of this tale claims that Yama Uba loves to prey upon children, and as a result, it has since become a common bedtime story to tell to disobedient children. Better be good, or Yama Uba will come and get you. Gozu Gozu, also known as Cowhead, is a story that was supposedly discovered in Japanese literature during the 17th century. It is said that those who read or told the story are sent into a catatonic state where their minds are trapped into another dimension shortly before they die. The thing is, no one seems to be able to find the story, as it was claimed to have all traces destroyed after being seen as too powerful. Which only draws the question, what could that story possibly be about to elicit such a response? We might never know. Dream School Warning, this story is said to have a curse on it, one that if you listen to it and don't forget it in a week, the same dream will happen to you. If you'd rather not take the risk, skip to this time. The story goes as such, there was once a boy who dreamed he was in a school he didn't recognize, but something was very wrong with this school. It was run down and falling apart, but worse than that, it didn't make any sense. The boy would enter a room only to find himself back in the hallway. He would try to go upstairs to the roof only to find himself on the first floor. He would turn down a hall and find himself in the music room, then leave it and find himself in the restroom. It was all so confusing, but before long, the chime of a clock rang throughout the school, and soon, the boy began to hear footsteps. The boy ran for any possible exits, but all were shut tight. He looked for the key, but the glass box containing said key was smashed in, with only a note left in its place. The key is in room 108. The boy was frantic now, rushing to make his way to the room, all while the footsteps got louder and closer. Thankfully, the boy found the room and shut the door behind him, but the lights weren't working, and he could barely make out anything. Not long after, the footsteps approached, and whatever was chasing the boy started banging on the door. After an agonizing amount of time, the banging stopped, and whatever it was seemed to have walked away. The boy built up the courage to open the door and look down the hall, and there he saw it. A being made out of disfigured limbs, torsos, and heads of many students, shambling along with movements that looked akin to a demented dance. 
The boy screamed, but the shock of what he was seeing did not wake him, realizing that this was a dream he was now waking up from. The boy ran again with the creature giving chase, and to this day, it's said that that boy still roams the halls of the dream school, unable to escape and always running away from the creature. Sendagaya Tunnel This tunnel, located in Shibuya, is said to be haunted thanks to its origins. Opened in 1964, this tunnel needed to be available for the Summer Olympics. However, there was an issue during the planning phase. A cemetery in need of redevelopment was in the area, and with no time to relocate the cemetery, they simply built under it. And since then, there have been rumors of the tunnel being haunted by the now restless spirits. Some reported saying that while driving through, handprints would start to form on their car windows, or that something heavy would land onto the roof of their cars. Others told that they saw a bloody woman hanging upside down. Many have also said that this very same blood-soaked woman has chased them out of the tunnel as they walked through at night. Oiran Buchi Known also as the Prostitute Bridge, this area is said to be greatly haunted due to its dark past. Legends say that during the 16th century, one of the richest clans at the time, the Takeda clan, had within their possession a gold mine in the area, with nearby brothels to keep the miners happy. After the Battle of Nagashiro, the Takeda clan was all but finished, but those few members of the dying clan made it a point to make sure that none of their enemies would ever find the mines, and thus aimed to kill those that could possibly leak information, the 55 prostitutes that worked at the brothels. The prostitutes were invited to come up to a large platform built over the Yane Gisawa River under the guise that they were to practice a dance for a farewell party. At the height of their dance, soldiers hacked away at the vines that held the platform up, causing it to collapse and leading to all 55 women to fall into the gorge below. Since then, people have cited hearing the cries and scream of women singing and other ghoulish sounds and men are cautioned about going to this bridge, especially during the night, as the vengeful spirits might retaliate against any men by pushing them off the edge, making them experience the same fate as them. The Red Room This legend is about a pop-up that displays while you're exploring the internet. A simple red window that says, Do you like blank? which is then read in a mangled but cutesy voice. If you choose to close the pop-up, it'll simply reappear, as words start to fade in with each reappearance. Soon the blank part of the question is filled in, revealing the full question. Do you like the red room? And at this point, your entire computer screen is enveloped in red and a list of names appear, past victims of the red room. What happens next is unclear, but one thing is for certain. Victims of the Red Room are later found, with the walls of their rooms coated with their own blood. The Round School Found in the rural town of Bibai, this abandoned school stands as one of the most haunted locations in Japan. Built in 1906, the building operated as a school from the 1940s up to the 70s and has been vacant ever since, with the area around it getting so overgrown that the only way to reach this building now is on foot. Rumors regarding this place have ranged from spirits or shadowy figures being spotted amongst the trees, screaming throughout the night. Several people, including children going in the direction of this place or inside of it only to never return, and the common paranormal happenings that include items inside being knocked over, footsteps that seem to come from all over, doors slamming shut, giggling, and more. It's even claimed that within the school lies a portal connecting the spirit world with ours. Haunted Phone Booth this phone booth that lies next to the Hachioji Cemetery in western Tokyo is said to be home to all kinds of paranormal happenings, 
like getting calls from the spirit world or being haunted by a ghostly woman. Legends say that if you were to try and make a phone call here at night, she'll appear. If you're lucky, she'll just look at you with a sorrowful expression before disappearing. However, if she is in a bad mood, she'll look at you with malice and let out a scream or wail that'll chill you to your core. It's best not to stick around, lest you might end up spirited away yourself. Surara Ona Otherwise known as Icicle Woman, Surara Ona is a folktale that details a spirit that comes to comfort single men during the winter. The story goes that a lonely man was looking at the icicles hanging under the eaves of his home and wished for a wife as beautiful as the icicles. Later that night, a beautiful woman knocked on his door and the man let her in from the cold. They soon fell in love with the woman wanting to be his wife. They had a very lovely relationship, but the man would take notice that his wife never wanted to take a bath. One day, the man got fed up and made her go into the bathroom and bathe. She complied, but after a while she wouldn't come out. Worried, the man peeked into the bathroom, but there was no sign of her. Only bits and pieces of ice floating in the bathtub. Some versions of this tale go on to say that the man felt sad thinking that the woman ran away from him, but within a year found another woman. Winter comes again, and one day the man goes to clean the eaves of his home of icicles, only to see his former wife standing out in the snow. Feeling betrayed that her lover had remarried, she takes the form of a giant icicle and stabs him through the brain, leaving his new wife to find his dead body out in the front yard. Himuro Mansion This mansion is said to have been home to one of the most gruesome murders in modern Japanese history. Rumor has it that the Himuro family had participated in a twisted Shinto ritual known as the Strangling Ritual. In order to seal off bad karma that would emerge from a portal on the castle grounds every 50 years. The preparations would go as such. A girl would be chosen at birth by the master of the household and isolated from the outside world in order to prevent her from developing any emotional ties that would jeopardize the effect of the ritual. And on the day of the ritual, the woman was bound by ropes on her ankles, wrists, and neck. The ropes were attached to teams of oxen and horses to rip her limbs off of her body, quartering her. The ropes used to bind her appendages would then be soaked in her blood and laid over the gateway of the portal. They believed that this would seal off the portal for another 50 years until the ritual had to be repeated. During the last ritual, it is said that the woman had fallen in love with a man who tried to save her from said ritual. This created the aforementioned emotional tie to the earth, tainting her blood and spirit, which ruined the ritual altogether. Upon learning of the woman's love, the master took up his sword and butchered all of his family members before finally, in fear of what would happen now that their means of keeping the evil at bay were fubar, ended his own life as well. Since then, Legend has it that these souls of the murdered family wander the mansion, attempting to repeat the failed ritual using whomever enters the abandoned building. Locals had even reported seeing splashes of blood on the walls, as if they were flicked from the blade of a sword that had recently sliced through flesh. The Fatal Frame series is said to have taken inspiration from this legend. Isegami Tunnel Constructed in 1897, this tunnel, found in Toyota Aichi, is claimed to be haunted by the spirits of the construction workers that died during the making of it, as well as two children and their mother who died during the Isewan Typhoon of 1959. Local stories talk of hearing the sounds of groans and voices, seeing ghosts of the workers, the two children, or the mother, feeling a wave of nausea as you enter, and even that grave misfortune would befall you if you were to ever go through the tunnel and come back around the same way. Fall and Die Village This is another dream-related urban legend. As far as I know, this story isn't also supposedly cursed. But if you would rather be safer than sorry, 
skip to this time. The dream goes as such. You find yourself in a rural village, with the sun setting and the sky painted dusk. While it might seem peaceful at first, you'll quickly find out it isn't at all. Littered throughout the entire village are discolored corpses, from paths and roads to even nearby streams. This macabre sight will be everywhere you look. After wandering in the village for a while, you will come across three girls dressed in kimonos who quickly run up to you. They inform you to be careful as you are in the village where if you fall, you die. As soon as they are done explaining, one of the girls starts to walk away, but stumbles over a corpse and falls to the ground. The girl then screams in horror as her body turns a bluish purple color, and just as quick as she fell, her body goes limp and she lays on the ground, dead. Many people have had different things happen to them in the dream after this event. Some people say that the remaining girls start to chase them, and they run away from them until they wake up. Some have even said that the girls force them to get on stilts to stand on until they awake. And others have said that nothing happens, and they just wake up a few seconds after the girl shrivels up and dies. Hone Ona Hone Ona are spirits of dead women that come back from beyond to be with the one they loved while they were alive. To those blinded by grief and love, they see the would-be deceased woman as healthy as can be, as if nothing happened to them. The Hone Ona themselves would not even realize that they're even a spirit. However, those unclouded by grief and love can see the Hone Ona for what she truly is, a rotting skeletal corpse. If the Hone Ona is left with their lover, then all will seem well initially, but over time, the man will get weaker and sicker, as unbeknownst to him, the Hone Ona is sapping his life force little by little with each night. Without intervention, the man will die, joining his lover together in death for all eternity. To prevent a Hone Ona from pursuing their man, protective wards and charms need to be placed around the house and the man must will the spirit away until it fully decays. However, it is said that the allure of the Hone Ona grows stronger as it decays, and most men succumb to her and let the spirit in one last time, sacrificing their life to the ghost of the woman they loved. No Mask Traditionally used in theater, these masks have been seen as unsettling by many, not only for their uncanniness, but also the fact that these masks can change expression just from a tilt of the head or a change in the lighting. As such, these masks have been the source of many myths and legends, like how they feed off of the negative energy of its wearer, eventually coming to life and influencing the wearer to commit heinous acts, or that wearing one for too long will trap your soul in a different dimension filled with pain and suffering, or that it can suck away your life force, leaving you as a rotting corpse, before the mask uses your body to find its next victim. Hito Bashira Otherwise known as human pillars, legends say that people used to sacrifice humans by sealing them inside of a structure. Doing this was believed to appease the nature spirits in an area, especially river spirits in areas where flooding was common, and be granted blessings from the gods to protect their castles, bridges, or what have you from any form of disasters both man-made and natural. It's commonly rumored that some structures, like the Maruoka and Matsue castles, used human pillars in their construction as explanation as to how they both survived for so long. But people have also cited many paranormal experiences at these castles and other areas that used human pillars, seemingly haunted by the restless souls still trapped inside. The Manhole this tells the story of a young Japanese girl named Mayumi who was walking to school, and on the way, she happened to see another girl playing at the end of the street. For some strange reason, the girl was jumping up and down. Mayumi knew that the girl must be attending the same school as her because they were both wearing the same uniform. When Mayumi got closer, she saw that the girl was jumping up and down on a manhole cover, and was muttering to herself, 
three, 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 three. Mayumi was puzzled, wondering what the girl was doing. Soon Mayumi recognized the girl was Haruka, a quiet and strange girl in her class who was often the target of bullying. Sometimes the other girls in the class would just ignore Haruka, and other times they would play cruel pranks on her. The teachers knew she was being bullied, but they just turned a blind eye and didn't even bother getting involved. Realizing that school was starting in a few minutes, Mayumi hurried off, leaving Haruka to play her strange little game. That day in class, Mayumi noticed that there was an empty desk. Haruka hadn't showed up for school all day. She wondered if Haruka had never left that spot, and if so, why would she miss school for such an odd and meaningless game? The bell signaled the end of the school day, and all the kids funneled out and headed home. Mayumi started her walk home as well, and on the way, she came across Haruka again, still in the same spot she had been that morning, still jumping up and down. Mayumi walked up to the girl and stopped right in front of her. Haruka simply ignored her, this time muttering, Nine, 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 nine. What are you doing? Mayumi asked the girl. But Haruka didn't answer and just continued muttering the same number. Hey, don't you ignore me? Mayumi said with more heat in her voice, but Haruka still did not reply. Until that moment, Mayumi never despised Haruka like the others did, but with her enjoying herself for hours on end and ignoring her completely, a sudden feeling of anger welled up in her. You better tell me what you're doing or you'll be sorry, warned Mayumi. But Haruka ignored the warning. Suddenly, Mayumi lost her temper and pushed Haruka to the ground. My turn she said, as she took the girl's place and stood on the manhole. Mayumi bent her knees and made a big jump into the air, and at that exact moment, Haruka quickly, using all her strength, removed the lid of the manhole, causing Mayumi to fall right into it. Haruka put the lid back on, smiling with satisfaction. She started jumping again, but this time muttering, Ten, 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 ten. Girl from the Gap Sometimes known as Tsukima Ona, the Girl from the Gap is a spirit that is said to reside in between the gaps and cracks between furniture, doors, and what have you. If you make eye contact with her, she will ask you if you want to play hide and seek. If you meet her gaze from this point onwards, she'll drag you to hell. Or alternatively, she makes it impossible for you to leave her side, thus making the victim bound to their house forever. Nakagusaku Hotel Ruins This decrepit ruin is an unfinished husk of what almost was. Construction of this massive concrete hotel began in the early 1970s, as a rich developer from Naha, the capital city of Okinawa, wanted to build a hotel in Leisure Park to capitalize on the tourists attending the 1975 Okinawa Ocean Exposition. The site seemed like the best place as it not only had a scenic view of the sea, but was even nearby the Nakagusaku Castle Ruins, a famous tourist spot. However, Buddhist monks gave warnings that ancient graves and secret sites were laid upon the hill where they wanted to build, and that angering the spirits was not wise. The developer ignored these warnings and proceeded with construction, but seemingly in response, the construction was met with many mishaps and even deaths that eventually brought the whole operation to a halt. In an effort to start up the construction again, the developer promised to stay overnight within the ruins and prove that it was completely safe. Come morning, and the developer was found in such a demented state that he was admitted into an asylum and later disappeared. Since then, the unfinished ruins had stood empty and abandoned, and was believed to be haunted by the angered spirits that were disturbed with the hotel's construction. People reported seeing strange lights floating around the ruins at night, strange sounds, the feeling of being watched, and feeling a chill as you roamed the halls. But as of March 2020, these ruins have finally been demolished. Will this mean that those spirits can now have their rest after all this time? Only time can tell. Hikiko-san Hikiko was a girl that was physically harmed by her father, 
The abuse would get so bad that it would cause deformities with her face and body, which in turn led to the kids at her school to bully her. None of the teachers or her peers would help her either, leaving her to suffer abuse both at school and at home until her unfortunate demise. There's two versions of this tale, one that says that Hikiko took her own life or was killed by her father, while the other goes on to say that Hikiko found solace in her life in the form of a stray kitten. After coming across it one day, Hikiko decided to take care of it, taking food to it every day and making sure it had a box to keep it safe. One day, three of Hikiko's bullies noticed that she seemed happier for some reason and followed her in secret to see what was the cause. They saw her taking care of the kitten and thought of a sick way to make her miserable again. The next day, Hikiko went to see the kitten as usual, but the kitten was gone. Instead, she found a note from the bully saying, if you want to see the kitten alive, come to the teacher's parking lot. She hurried over and found that the bullies had tied rope around the kitten's neck and tied the other end to a teacher's car. And just then, that teacher was leaving the school building and getting into the car without noticing the kitten, starting their car soon after. Hikiko quickly ran over to get the rope off the cat, soon successfully pulling it off of it, but just as she did, the teacher drove off and the rope hooked onto Hikiko's wrist and started to drag her against the ground. The teacher had driven several kilometers before they realized what was happening, but sadly it was too late. Hikiko was dead. Regardless of which version is told, it all ends the same, with Hikiko becoming a vindictive spirit that tracks down and kills all who wronged her. She is also said to go after bullies in general and those who see her and tell the police her parents. If she goes after you, she is said to decapitate or rip off the limbs of her victims, or even drag them relentlessly until their victim slowly dies. Okiku's Well This legend can be traced back to the Shogunate era. A samurai by the name of Aoyama Tessan had taken a liking to the beautiful servant named Okiku. Regardless of how many times he tried, Okiku would repeatedly refuse his advances, which frustrated the samurai. He devised a plan that he probably felt was cunning, and hid one of his ten priceless family heirloom plates, then blamed its disappearance on Okiku. Okiku, wanting to prove her innocence, counted and recounted the plates over and over again, but the tenth was nowhere to be found. Aoyama then offered to pardon her, but only if she'd agree to be his lover. Once again, Okiku refused, and blinded by rage, Aoyama grabbed Okiku and threw her down a well. It is said that when Okiku died, she became an Anryo, or vengeful spirit, and rose from the well every night, counting from one to nine before letting out an unearthly scream much like a banshee to mourn over the tenth plate that she never found. Some version of the story even claimed that she did this to get revenge on the samurai and drive him insane. As of now, Okiku's Well is a tourist attraction set at the Himeji Castle, but some claim that at night, when the castle was closed, Okiku's ghost can still be heard counting plates and shrieking in lament. Teke Teke Warning they say if you hear the story of the Teke Teke, she will appear to you within a month. If you'd like to play it safe, skip to this time. Teke Teke is the spirit of a young woman named Kashima Reiko who is said to have fallen onto train tracks and cut in half by a train. She lurks in urban areas and around train stations at night traversing with her hands or elbows and dragging her upper torso to make a scratching or teke teke like sound. If you encounter her, she will chase you down and slice you in half with a scythe she produces. There is an alternative version of this legend in which Kashima Reiko is set to haunt bathroom stalls. If encountered, she will ask, Where are my legs? You must say, At the Meishin Expressway. She will reply, who told you that? You must say, Kashima Reiko told me that. She will then ask, What is my name? Do not say Kashima Reiko, or else she will kill you. Instead, say Mask Deaf Demon or Kamen Shinin Majin, for that is the phonetic root of her name. If successful, 
she will leave you alone and go find another person to ask. Akasaka Weekly Mansion This hotel was cited as the most haunted hotel in Japan's history. Visitors have reported white mist billowing through the air vents, seeing figures stand at the foot of their beds at night, feeling icy fingers touching guests or stroking their hair as they tried to sleep, with one guest experiencing being pushed onto a bed and being unable to move, and another guest claimed that she was grabbed by her hair and dragged across the room, and later found with unexplainable scratches across her back. Today this hotel has been torn down and replaced with a new one, one that seems to be free from its prior hauntings. Let's hope it stays that way. Kuchisake Ona Kuchisake Ona, or the Slit Mouth Woman, is the legend of a Japanese woman who was killed and left with a slit open mouth. Some versions of the legend cite that it was her husband, a samurai, who slit her mouth as revenge for her infidelity. Others state that a woman was jealous of Kuchisaka Ona's beauty, so she decided to eliminate her competition in a gruesome fashion. A more modern interpretation in recent years has been that she was the result of a dental or plastic surgery procedure gone wrong. However the cause, Kuchisake Ona now haunts areas in Japan as a vengeful spirit, usually on foggy days or nights. She can be seen wearing a surgical mask, and if she approaches someone she'll ask in a shy manner, do you think I'm beautiful? The person usually responds with yes. She then pulls down her mask to reveal her disfigured mouth. She then asks, how about now? If you answer no, she will reveal a pair of scissors and kill you. If you answer yes, she will cut the same smile onto your face. There are several ways to prevent this terrible fate. One, confuse her by saying, you are average. Two, present her with hard amber candy, which she'll take much delight in and let you go. Three, say pomade three times, which will cause her to flee. Four, ask her if you are beautiful, which will confuse her hopefully long enough to escape. Be wary if you choose this or the first method, as she is said to be incredibly fast and will be unlikely to stop. 5. Tell her the name of your enemy, someone you personally know that you despise. Some say if the person is truly horrid, Kuchisake Ona will spare you and go after them instead. Akamanta Also known as the Red Cloak, Akamanta is a red spirit donned with a red cloak and a mask that haunts women's restrooms especially those that are older or seldom used. If you were to enter a restroom that is haunted by Akamanta and see there is no paper in the stall, Akamanta will appear and ask you if you want red paper or a blue paper. If you ask for red paper, he will stab you mercilessly, coating the stall with your blood. If you ask for blue paper, he will strangle you until your face turns blue. If you try to be cheeky and ask for yellow or purple paper, he will forcibly drag you into the toilet, taking you to the underworld. The only way to have Akamanta leave you be is to politely decline him of his offer. Kune 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 is a legend of a mysterious white human figure that can be seen in wide rice fields or acres, and in rare cases, it might be found over the open sea. Its limbs are said to wiggle endlessly, as if there was a straight gust of wind, even if it was a windless day. This wiggling is how the kune kune gets its name, as kune kune means to wiggle or shimmy. It's said that trying to get close to the kune kune will make you go insane, and that if you ever manage to touch it, you would die on the spot. So it's best to just leave it alone, for as long as you leave it be, the kune kune will leave you alone too. Roku Rokubi Roku Rokubi are long neck women, 
is a yokai that is said to be born from a curse inflicted onto a normal human girl. It is unsure as to what evil deed could possibly lead to such a curse, but sources have claimed infidelity or committing some act of mischief against the gods or nature are possible causes. Roku Rokubi look and act like normal humans during the day, but at night, their necks grow longer and longer, freeing their heads to move around almost independently from their bodies. They primarily enjoy scaring people, attacking small animals and sometimes licking up lamp oil with their long tongues. Some Roku Rokubi actually prefer to live their lives pretending to be a human, but no matter how close they look to humans, there is always one telltale sign into figuring them out. They will have pale stretch marks on their neck. A variation of the Roku Rokubi is the Nuke Kubi, or removable head woman. As the name implies, instead of having their necks extend, the Nuke Kubi's head detaches from the body and floats about. They are known as the more violent type of Roku Rokubi, brutally biting humans and animals and drinking their blood. There is a way to deal with these types, however. Nuke Kubi tend to hide their body so that it will not be disturbed while it's looking for its next meal. If you were to simply find and move the body to a safe place during the night, the head will not be able to return and will eventually die. Kiyotaki Tunnel This is a massive tunnel that connects northern Arashiyama to the neighboring town of Saga Kiyotaki. Built from 1927 to 1928, the Kiyotaki Tunnel is said to be roughly 444 meters long, that number being of most significance as four shares the same word for deaf in Japan, shi. Even from the beginning, it seemed this tunnel was destined to be haunted, as the workers who were recruited to build this tunnel were reportedly treated poorly and never paid, some even dying, and it's said that their spirits haunt this tunnel at night. It's said that while driving through to never look at any of your mirrors as doing so would show you those spirits and bring about a violent, painful fate. There are also claims that the traffic lights outside the tunnel can suddenly shift from red to green, causing accidents with oncoming traffic. And finally, the area is said to be a popular suicide spot due to the woodland seclusion and sturdiness of the trees above the tunnel, and it's said that the screams of those that died and their spirits can also be seen in and around the tunnel. Purple Mirror Purple Mirror is a legend about a cursed word. It's said that if you still remember the story by the time you are 20 years old, you will die. If you would like to not take the risk, skip to this time. Years ago, there was a Japanese girl who was very self-absorbed and spent all her time staring at her reflection in a mirror. It had been given to her as a present by her mother and the girl cherished it more than anything. The girl was desperate to be beautiful and dedicated so much time into perfecting herself that her health grew worse and worse, even going on to develop anorexia, starving herself to the point where she was painfully thin. However, when she gazed into the mirror, it didn't matter how pale and sickly she looked in actuality, her reflection was always beautiful. One day, she wanted to decorate her mirror and so she painted it purple. But when she looked into the glass, she was horrified. She no longer saw herself as beautiful. She saw herself for what she actually looked like. Disgusted, she smashed the mirror into pieces, but would eventually grow to regret this action. On her 20th birthday, the girl was in the middle of making preparations for her coming of age party when she was hit by a car and suffered fatal injuries. As she laid on the ground bleeding to death, the last word she uttered shocked the crowd surrounding her. Purple mirror, purple mirror, purple mirror. She then died, leaving everyone in wonder of why she was talking about her beloved purple mirror seconds before death. After the funeral, when her parents searched her room, they couldn't find the purple mirror anywhere. Rumors about the girl spread across Japan, and soon after, some young people were found dead under mysterious circumstances. All of them died on their 20th birthday, and no cause of the death was ever found, but in each case, shards of purple glass were found in their bedrooms. 
As the investigation of the deaths continued, the friends of the people who died admitted that all of them, especially the ones that died, had heard of the Purple Mirror story as well. Ever since that day, the words Purple Mirror have been cursed, and it's believed that anyone who still remembers the phrase by their 20th birthday will die. Hachi Shakusama Hachi Shakusama, or Eight Feet Tall, is an urban legend about an extremely tall woman who abducts children. She is normally seen wearing a long white summer dress, along with a white wide-brimmed hat. She also makes a sound in a masculine voice that sounds like Paul, Paul, Paul. Hachi Shakusama can disguise herself as a relative of the child in order to deceive them and allow her to easily steal them. When she has taken a liking to a kid, they are destined to die within a few days by her hands. It's said that the only way to escape Hachi Shakusama after you've seen her is to pray her spirit away and quickly find a shrine to request the help of a priest. It is even recommended to leave Japan altogether, as she herself cannot leave Japan, and once she likes a child, she will never give up on taking their soul, even if a decade passes. It's said that if you were to ever return to Japan after leaving, Hachi Shakusama will find you instantly, even if you're an adult. Okiku Doll This doll is supposedly possessed by the spirit of a child named Okiku. No relation to Okiku's well, of course. It is said that the doll was originally purchased in 1918 by a 17-year-old boy named Ikichi Suzuki while visiting Sapporo for a marine expedition. He bought the doll on Tanuki Koji, Sapporo's famous shopping street, as a souvenir for his two-year-old sister, Okiku. The young girl loved the doll and played with it every day, but the following year she sadly died of a cold. The family placed the doll on the household altar and prayed to it every day in memory of Okiku. But sometime later, they noticed the hair on the doll had started to grow. This was seen as a sign that instead of passing on, Okiku's spirit had inhabited the doll. In 1938, the Suzuki family moved and placed the doll in the care of the Maneji Temple, where it's upkept even to this day. Nobody has ever been able to fully comprehend why or how the doll's hair continues to grow. Some that were exceptionally curious took samples of the doll's hair and examined it concluding that it was indeed the hair of a young girl. Kayako Kayako is an urban legend about a woman who was murdered by her husband and came back as an Anryo. When Kayako was a young girl, her parents neglected her. She spent most of her time feeling depressed and lonely. She didn't have any friends and the other children at school thought she was creepy and made fun of her. When she grew up and got married to a man named Teiko Seki, she felt like he was the only person in the world who cared about her. They lived a happy life together and she gave birth to a little boy named Toshio. One day, Teiko was snooping around in their bedroom and found her diary. When he read it, he found an entry where she mentioned a man's name he didn't recognize. Teiko soon became convinced that she was cheating on him not knowing that said name was the name of a childhood crush that was unrequited. When Kayaku came home from work and went upstairs, Teko was waiting for her, holding a knife. He attacked her, beating her and slashing her viciously right in front of their young son. Kayako attempted to flee with Teko giving chase. Kayako slipped and fell on the process which broke her ankle, but despite this she continued her escape, crawling down the stairs and making it closer and closer to the front door. But just when the outside was within reach, Teiko grabbed her, holding her by the head before violently twisting it around, breaking her neck. Kayako did not die instantly, but was instead stuck paralyzed with the only sound she could make being that of a hoarse death rattle. Teiko dragged her upstairs, put her in a plastic bag, and left her in the attic to die. Teiko then got their son and drowned him in the bathtub before stuffing his body in a closet. Because she died in such pain, anguish, and rage, Kayako came back as an Anryo. She appeared to Teiko later that night and strangled him with her hair. He was found the next morning lying in the street, with police thinking that he took his own life. 
Ever since then, Kayako's ghost haunts the house in which she died. They say that if you go into the house, you will hear Kayako's hoarse, choked death rattle and see her crawling down the stairs, covered in blood and rolling her broken neck around in a sickening, cracking sound. The grudge, or Zhuon as it's known in Japan, was directly inspired by this legend. Yuki Ona Also known as the Snow Woman, Yuki Ona is one of the most popular urban legends in Japan. Yuki Ona prey on travelers lost in the heavy snowstorms, or people who trek through the mountain areas in the winter. They are known to have the appearance of a beautiful woman with long black hair, deep violet eyes, snow white skin, and a white kimono to go with it. The breath of a Yuke Ona is powerful, allowing her to easily freeze her victims by blowing on them. It's said that if you were to touch one of her victims, it would give you a deep, unshakable chill. Yuki Ona is said to on rare occasions fall in love with their soon-to-be victim and ends up letting them go free. The husband, however, will eventually figure out who she really is, whether by noticing that she doesn't age or noticing that an ungodly coldness follows her whenever she goes, and the happy marriage usually comes to an end when he finds out her secret. Most of the time, though, a Yuki Ona will spend her life hunting humans in the snow. There are many ways a Yuki Ona hunts. She can lure her victims away from the path through the mountains, causing them to get lost and slowly freeze to death. She can lie in wait near the road, then surprise unsuspecting victims with her freezing breath. She can break into homes and simply freeze everyone inside. She can walk down the path and confront you directly before sucking out your life force. Or she can call out to the person, and if they walk to her, she will attack them. If they ignore her, then she will grow angry and use her powers over the icy winds to blow you off the mountain. Regardless of the method, Yuki Ona are mostly very malicious spirits that should be avoided at all costs. The Ten Day Dream The legend of the Ten Day Dream details, as the name implies, ten dreams you'll experience over the course of ten days, with each dream having a rule you must follow. Warning. This is another story that is said to curse you if you listen to it, claiming that you'll experience these dreams within three days after hearing it. If you'd not like to take the risk once again, skip to this time. First day. You will dream that you were sleeping in your room. Then you will notice a girl peering through the window. First rule. You must let the girl in. Second day. The girl is inside your room. She is looking downward and you cannot see her face because of her long hair. She is muttering something. After a while, you realize she is saying, Please. Please. Second rule. Let her come into the bed and lie down next to you. Third day. You and the girl are laying side by side. You are now able to see the girl's face. Her face is horribly burnt. Third rule, do not cry out when you see your face. Fourth day, you will get out of bed, and the girl will say, let's go to the park. Fourth rule, take the girl to the nearest park without saying a word. Fifth day, when you arrive at the park, you will notice someone pushing a stroller. You will look closely and notice that the mother is a cat and the baby is a dog. Fifth rule, you must kill either one of them. Sixth day, while you are playing with the girl in the park, you will see a plane about to take off. Sixth rule, make sure you get on the plane in time. Seventh day, the plane is full of people who have heard this story just as you have. Seventh rule, find a seat for yourself at all costs. Eighth day, after some time, red and black roses will start to rain down on you. Eighth rule, throw out only the black roses from the plane. Ninth day, the plane takes you back to the park. Ninth rule, go home with the girl and lie down in bed again. Tenth day, you will not know what happens on the tenth day unless you have fulfilled all the rules in the previous days 
and you should tell the story to someone while you are awake. Otherwise, you will go back to the first day of this dream forever. Red Crayon This urban legend tells of a young married couple that buys a new home together. It seemed like a nice place, with an even nicer neighborhood to settle down in. They moved in and got everything all set up. All was well. However, one day, the husband was walking down the hall when he spotted a red crayon on the floor. They didn't have any children. Not yet, at least. So the husband was perplexed at how it got there. Thinking that it must have been left there by the previous homeowners, he puts it away and goes about his day. The next day after coming home from work, he finds another red crayon in the exact same spot. Confused, he brought it up to his wife, and her face grew grim, as she was also finding red crayons, but they were always at the end of that hallway. They both stood in the hallway looking around to see where the crayons could possibly be coming from, but that's when the husband noticed something. The hallway was much shorter than it looked from outside. He walked to the end and knocked on the wall, hearing a hollow sound. He then began to tear the wallpaper down, much to his wife's ire, but she quickly stopped protesting when she saw what was uncovered, a pair of sliding doors that were nailed shut. Fetching a hammer, the husband began to take out the nails and soon was able to open the door. Inside was a small room with white walls, but upon further inspection, the white walls had writing on them, written with a red crayon. The words said, Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Mommy, I'm sorry, let me out. Over and over and over again. Mary son. You've probably heard something like this story before. It seems to have a version in every region of the world, not just Japan. But the story goes as such. There was a young girl who had a doll she cherished. The doll's name was Mary. Unfortunately, during a move into a new home, the young girl lost Mary. The girl was deeply saddened by this, but the parents tried to make her feel better by saying they'll buy a new doll for her, and eventually the girl relented. One night, the girl's parents went out, and she was left home in the new home. All of a sudden, the phone started to ring. When the girl answered it, she heard a voice on the other end of the line. Hello, it's Mary-san. I'm at the garbage dump now. The girl got scared and hung up the phone, but almost immediately it started to ring again. Hello, it's Mary-san. I'm at the corner store now. The girl hung up but the phone started ringing yet again. Hello, it's Mary's son. I'm in front of your house now. Scared beyond belief, she ran downstairs and peeked out the window, but there was nobody there. Maybe it was just a prankster, the girl thought. She let out a sigh of relief and went back upstairs. However, just as she entered her room again, the phone started to ring. She answered, hoping it was her mother or father, but all she heard was, Hello, it's Mary Sun. I'm right behind you. This story is also known as Lika-chan in Japan, named after the popular Japanese dolls. It's said that dolls form a spiritual connection with those who care for them, and that any doll that's thrown away becomes vengeful and seeks revenge. Futakuchi Ona also known as the Two-Mouthed Woman, these are a yokai in similar vein to Roku Rokubi, being born from a curse placed on the woman in question. Instead of a stretchy neck, however, this leaves the woman with a functioning mouth that appears on the back of their head, one that demands food more than double what the woman eats normally, and if it doesn't get what it wants, it'll screech and cause the woman unbearable pain. After living with the curse for a while, the mouth gains the ability to use the woman's hair in a prehensile manner, allowing the second mouth to help itself and get more aggressive if it isn't properly fed. This curse is said to occur over a multitude of reasons. Some say it happens when a woman rarely eats or intentionally tries to starve herself. Others say it's the result of what happens when an overtly stingy woman is accidentally hit on the head. 
and few have even said that it occurs when a woman keeps some of her children fed, but not a child the mother doesn't like, or a stepchild. This causes the neglected child to die of starvation and come back to curse the mother and get revenge, making the mother constantly feel the very same hunger pains the child endured. Nure Ona Known also as the Snake Woman, Nure Ona is an urban legend about a creature with the head of a woman and the body of an enormous snake. They're said to loom on the coast near the water or by a riverbank, preying on unsuspecting swimmers and fishermen. When she spots her prey, she rises from the water and paralyzes her victim with her snake-like eyes. She then uses her long snake-like tongue to suck out all the blood of the victim's body. Despite her massive length, Nure Ona can hide in deceptively shallow pools of water, and she has been known to use her beautiful face and hair to lure swimmers to their deaths. Another version of the tale states that the Nure Ona can disguise itself as a normal woman, often carrying a bundled up baby. As she sits by the shoreline, she'll undoubtedly catch the attention of someone either concerned for the baby's safety or wondering what she's doing. From there, she will come up to you and ask you to hold her baby for her. Not wanting to be rude, most people would agree and do so. She will let them hold the bundle, and if the person holds it for as long as needed, the Nure Ona will take it back and let them go on their merry way. If the person attempts to get rid of the bundle, however, it is revealed that it is not a baby at all, but instead, a rock. The rock then turns into a boulder, becoming incredibly heavy and crushing the victim to prevent them from fleeing. She then uses her tongue to suck the victim's blood. There are yet other versions of the story, saying that Nure Onas will lure men into the waters by disguising themselves as beautiful women who want said men to come and swim with them, only to brutally attack and kill those who hop into the waters. And there's even one that states that the Nure Ona simply seeks solitude and only reacts violently if someone attempts to bother them. Tanome. Known also as Eyes on Hand, Tanome are violent spirits of the blind. The legend goes that there was a blind old man who walked the roads at night, seeing it as a nice and peaceful end to his day. However, one day he was attacked by robbers, who beat him viciously and left him to die alone in a field. As he lay dying, the blind man cried out in anger and frustration, if only I had one glance at their faces! If only I had eyes that worked! Because he died in such a state of rage and agony, the blind man returned as a Tanome. His desire for revenge was so great that his blind eyes were gone and a new pair of eyes on the palms of his hands replaced them. With a new set of eyes and hatred on his mind, he began roaming roads and fields looking for his attackers. But due to him never seeing their faces, his rage causes him to attack anyone in his path with the belief that he would surely find his attacker someday. Tanome often use their appearances to their advantage, having sympathetic people walk towards them to offer help. But by the time the person realizes what they're in the presence of, it is too late for them to escape the Tanome's clutches. As although they have poor eyesight by default, Tanome are still able to hold its hands in front of its face or out in front of them to see. And along with that, Tanome are said to run surprisingly quick, with an inhuman sense of smell, making it extremely hard to get away. Kiseragi Station This incident was documented in real time on Japan's two-channel message board back in 2004, under a thread titled, Post Strange Occurrences That Have Happened to You. During the thread, a poster that went by Hasumi detailed how they were riding a train late at night, but something was amiss. Despite it being a train that they frequently rode, one that usually reached its stop every five minutes, Hasumi mentions that the train had not stopped at any station for the past 20 minutes. Over time, around an hour passes before the train finally stops at Kisaragi Station. Hasumi had never heard of the station before, and nobody on 2 Channel could find any information on the deserted mystery station. Hasumi contacted their family and even the police for help, but nobody could find where this station was. From then on, weird things started to happen, such as an apparition that yelled at Hasumi before vanishing into thin air, 
and the sound of a beating drum and bell seemingly getting closer. Hasumi decided to move along the train tracks towards the previous station, and after a while was greeted by a friendly stranger who called for a train to help take Hasumi the rest of the way. Things seemed fine at first, but were quickly overcome with unease as the train started to head into the mountains, and when asked about this, the stranger stopped talking altogether. With their battery running low, Hasumi plans to make a run for it when they are able, and signs off for now. But Hasumi was never heard from again. Fatal Fair this tells the story of a taxi driver driving along a road at night. He soon spots a person who suddenly appears from the darkness and hails the taxi. The person sits in the back of the car and asks to be taken to a place the driver has never heard of. The driver is hesitant, but the passenger assures him that he'll be able to get there with the help of directions, and even offers a little bit of extra money to help quell his worries. The driver agrees and starts driving. But then the passenger proceeds to give the driver confusing and complex directions, leading them down different streets and alleyways and even through many towns. This continues until the driver gets uneasy or annoyed before turning to ask the passenger where they're even supposed to be going again. The driver is shocked to see that his back seat is completely empty. Confused, the taxi driver faces the road again, only to see that he's about to drive off the edge of a cliff, and despite his attempts to stop, he flies off and crashes at the bottom. Inunaki Village Supposedly located deep in the Inunaki countryside of Kyushu's Fukuoka Prefecture, this abandoned village is said to be only accessible through the Inunaki Tunnel, a tunnel where hundreds of workers were killed when it collapsed during its construction, and even this tunnel on its own is said to be haunted by those that perished with the sounds of barking dogs and ghastly screams emanating from deep inside the tunnel, and some even stating that cars that drive even close to the tunnel will break down. If you happen to make it out to the other side of the tunnel, you would need to take a small side road that can be easily missed, and it's then, and only then, where you could stumble upon the entrance to the village. It's said that you'll be first greeted by a sign warning that the constitutions and laws of Japan do not apply here. The village was said to be abandoned for reasons that aren't entirely clear. Some say it was because of a widespread plague that whopped out the population. Others say it was just due to how out of the way it was. But either way, it's said that nowadays, the village has inhabitants that practice everything to the occult to more depraved acts like cannibalism, incest, and necrophilia. Adventurers and people that tried to prove their courage who tried to find the village reportedly never came back, with the very few that managed to escape before it was too late, said that the village is full of traps and the villagers themselves will try to attack you with hatchets and sickles. There's no phone service either, and it's even rumored that something about the village will make your phone just shut down inexplicably, leaving you completely and utterly on your own. Tamino's Hell Tamino's Hell is a poem written by Saijo Yaso. Written in 1919, this poem is said to be incredibly cursed, saying that anyone who would speak it aloud would have all kinds of terrible things happen to them, with everything from injury, sickness, or even death. While this is mainly said about it in its original language, English translations do exist and are sometimes said to be just as cursed as the original version. Without further ado, the poem goes as such. Elder sister vomits blood, younger sister's breathing fire, while sweet little Tamino just spits up the jewels. All alone does Tamino go falling into that hell, a hell of utter darkness without even flowers. Is Tamino's big sister the one who whips him? The purpose of the scourging hangs dark in his mind, lashing and thrashing him, but never quite shattering. One sure path to Avicii, the eternal hell. Into that blackest of hells guide him now. I pray to the golden sheep, to the nightingale. How much did he put in that leather pouch to prepare for his trek to the eternal hell? Spring is coming to the valley, to the wood, 
to the spiraling chasms to the blackest hell. The nightingale in her cage, the sheep aboard the wagon, and tears well up in the eyes of sweet little Tamino. Sing, O oh nightingale, in the vast misty forest he screams, he only misses his little sister. His wailing desperation echoes throughout hell. A fox peony opens its golden petals. Down past the seven mountains and seven rivers of hell, the solitary journey of sweet little Tamino. If in this hell they be found, may they then come to me, please, those sharp spikes of punishment from Needle Mountain. Not just on some empty whim is flesh pierced with blood-red pins. They serve as hellish signposts for sweet little Tamino. Well, that's all. 50 Legends, half of a traditional Hyaku Monogatari Kadankai. I can only imagine how much longer this video would have been with another 50. Uh, <laughs> this was fun. It was very fascinating to read up more on legends that I had heard before and see legends that I'd never had seen before. It was also extremely fun to read through a lot of these and go, oh, that's that demon from SMT. Or, oh, that's what Pokemon was doing. I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found it interesting. If there's any interest, I could do videos on other cultures. I know the UK has a bunch, I know Mexico has a ton, so let me know. That being said, I'm very sorry that I didn't upload anything in November besides an already late video on horror games. With this, SMT5, and mobile games again, it was a month that just slipped past me and I even miss the fact that I have a thousand subscribers now. It happened almost a week after my last video and that... I... <laughs> I can't believe that that many people actually want to see what a goober like me does on this site, so... All I can really say is thank you so much and thank you for even watching this far in the video. It honestly means a lot. So, I'm gonna go rest my voice. <laughs> My next video will hopefully, hopefully, be a lot more simple and shorter than this. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. Be safe out there. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.